Paula Flahia to Good Evening, leading our news bulletin for tonight. Last Sunday, Toy Member of Parliament Dionto Fitu was sworn into the new Legislative Assembly in a short ceremony held at the City Life Hotel in Auckland, New Zealand. This is the first time that this has been done in Nui's political history, with some questioning whether this will set precedence for Nui's future. Mr. Tofitu successfully contested his seat in the village of Toi in May at the general elections, but has been unable to take the official oath as he has been on overseas medical leave with the approval from the Speaker of the New House of Assembly. Unfortunately, BCN's reporter Mona Ainu was not allowed into the event for coverage of this momentous occasion. Mrs. Ainu says that she is disappointed over the turn of events as the oath of allegiance by members of the new legislative House of Assembly is a public occasion in Niue that is witnessed by many. According to Mrs. Ainu, such steps taken by the Speaker of the House not only makes for speculation but believes a gag on the press is not right and it weakens the government's stance on democracy. Freedom of the press is important and journalists need to make officials accountable for their actions and decisions as well as good governance. The speaker is currently on family commitments leave in New Zealand and this was timely as the premier and officials of the new delegation were in New Zealand for the Pacific Island Forum Leaders Meeting and also present to sign off on the declaration on Sunday. It seems that this latest development has been done with some consultation with political adviser Tony Angelo, who was on the island a few weeks ago. Nui's constitution is quite vague as to whether or where such an oath should be taken, and this is something that Parliament will have to review alongside the planned constitution review. The next new Legislative Assembly meeting is scheduled to be held on Wednesday next week. As the 14th Pacific Games nears to a close, it has not been in vain as Team Niue have managed to place on the medals table. Unconfirmed reports according to the Pacific Island News Association site, Niue now has a total of 8 medals with 4 bronze and 4 silver medals. We tried to contact Team Niue management for confirmation of these results and which sports codes made placings but were unable to get hold of them for comment or response. We do understand, however, that parts of Team Niue will be returning to the island tomorrow. The Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries are taking on a more proactive approach to assisting farmers with planned village consultations. We caught up with the team today in Avaseli, the second village to benefit from this latest development. Farmers have raised concerns and needs in the past and the department has taken these concerns on board to find other ways of improving their an interaction with stakeholders. This is our response to try and uh, improve our services to uh, the people uh, and to the stakeholders that we, that we serve. So uh, what we have noticed is that it's sometimes difficult for people to call in uh, via phone or email or uh, um, coming to visit us personally uh, and also people are not aware necessarily of which officers are doing what so um, the whole exercise is to get out and visit each of the villages hopefully once a month maybe once every two months depending on on how how we go and the other workload that we have but basically we want to be able to create a presence um, uh, working together with the, the stakeholders that we have um, it will give them better information about uh, what we do, what we are doing, um, what services we can provide, what help we can provide them with. Um, yeah, so that, you know, hopefully we, we can do a bit better. And uh, also, as we, as some of the projects that we, are, we have in the pipeline and we're trying to secure resources for come online, we'll, we'll have much better opportunities to um, integrate that at a national level as opposed to in the past just pilot projects where only a, a small number of recipients actually um, tie up a lot of our capacity. So this is one way of spreading um, that out around the island so that everybody um, feels like they're getting um, you know, access to services and to opportunities. Brendan says that DAF are hoping to integrate their plans and engage more with farmers through these village visits and presentations moving from one village each month to
provide a quick response to ensure that the agricultural sector thrives on the island. Lightning last night caused some major outages to some of the telecommunication networks on the island, affecting telephone services to Tsamgotonga and Avasele, including Matavai, as well as the GSM mobile service from the Sikana site in Makefu, which means no service to the lower Alofi areas. Director of Telecom Tutuli Hacker says staff have been working to restore these services as soon as possible. Newest internet service provider IUSN has been rewarded for its innovative Wi-Fi internet network. This is part of the global drive to recognize innovators in the field of ICT by the Information Society Innovation Fund. We spoke to Rocket Systems Managing Director Emani Louis about the award. Uh, this award we had to apply for it and a lot of people around the Asia Pacific region applied for this award and it goes into uh, the categories uh, there are four categories uh, in total and we were nominated and won the localization and capacity building award uh, because new is isolated uh, the drive is towards uh, enabling uh, people around the Asia-Pacific region, especially those who are isolated. And as you know, New is quite, quite isolated from the world, and the technologies that we have been uh, using are quite innovative. Uh, some of these technologies are not used uh, in, the, in the main uh, populated areas. So it's uh, basically used in the uh, last mile um, technology, meaning that it's the furthest point that you can get to in a location, so you used to, so the technology that we're using is, is quite innovative, and we also uh, think outside the box when we're using some of these technologies. Um, when it says something that it's supposed to be done the way it's supposed to be done inside a manual, uh, we push the boundaries with this, uh, some of the technologies that we're using, and we're quite uh, happy that we're able to provide the results that we've uh, been providing for newer so far. Plans are also in motion to continue with upgrades to the Wi-Fi network with the current project to construct a 40-metre tower in La Kappa to provide a more direct link for the villages of Mutalo, Liku and La Kappa. Imani says that he will also be receiving the award at the Internet Governance Forum being held in Nairobi, Kenya at the end of this month. Local fishermen are getting tips and training on mid-water fishing techniques around fads this week. The training exercise organised by the New Fisheries and Secretariat of the Pacific Community began on Wednesday. William Sokimi, a master fisherman from SPC, is facilitating the training that he says is more suited for boat and canoe fishermen. We caught up with them today as they progress into the second day of training. Right now we're constructing fishing gear. And then from here, we're going to go out fishing, but we need to wait for the, the cargo ship to leave. So by the time it leaves, we should have all our gear ready. And uh, they're really looking forward to the methods that they haven't been using before. It's only one or two methods that uh, we're introducing that uh, will be beneficial for outboard fishermen as well as the canoe fishermen. And we don't want to, the thing we want to emphasize here is it's for, from canoe level into powerboat level. And uh, these fishing methods that, that we are going to use, it's also fishing methods that are used on big commercial boats to find out the uh, type of fish that's below the uh, fads. So it works just as well on those big boats as it will on a canoe. The concept is there. If you have uh, accessories, it makes it easier. You eliminate tangles and uh, probably speed up your fishing. But if you don't, then you start stepping down, like with reels. If you have them, we use them. Uh, swivels and uh, crimps and all that. If you don't have crimps, then we tie knots. So, But it would be good that eventually, if they make money and they can put some aside, then they get some accessories just to make their fishing easier. Fishermen have also been looking at conventional methods of improvising to make gears out of materials readily available on the island. The hope is that fishermen will be able to apply what they've learned to catch more fish. I hope that uh, first thing they will be fishing, uh, they'll, they'll think of safety, they prepare themselves well for going out to sea. 
uh, then with the methods that we are giving them, they're able to target the, the species they want, like uh, to really make use of uh, uh, catching the, the tuna that's around feds, like uh, at a deeper level. Because really, uh, there's a lot of trolling, and trolling burns fuel. So while we encourage them to do trolling, as soon as the, if trolling, you know, when it stops biting, then they should go for the deeper fish. Eh? Uh, it's there below the surface. Sometimes they think that the fish has, like, gone, moved off to uh, offshore and will be back in the afternoon when really it's just gone deeper. And we try to get them to use this method to attack the fish, to get the fish from the bottom and bring it up. Um, also, one of the main things we try to emphasize here is the to make you know sustainable fishing methods and you know and uh, to think uh, eco-friendly. That you know they only target the size that they need. If the size is small, leave it. Look for go to another ground that has uh, or another fed that has bigger fish. The midwater fishing techniques training will conclude on Wednesday next week. The Rugby World Cup hype has made its way to Niue as the world counts down to kick-off time for the opening of the event that is being hosted by New Zealand. It's no surprise as the Pacific is a rugby-mad region and Niue is not immune to it either. The Niue Primary School showed their support towards the event today in a brief program, getting students all hyped up for the event. Students and teachers held their own World Cup opening ceremony, dressing up, representing different teams in a march pass before progressing on with some fun games. This is a little bit out of the ordinary, but it's not every day that the Rugby World Cup comes to our region, as it's held every four years. With a total of 20 teams represented in four pools, the competition will run until the 23rd of October. The first game kickoff tonight will no doubt leave some conflicted who to support as the hosts, the New Zealand All Blacks, take on the Ikaletahi of Tonga, both teams with strong Pacific links. All the best to all teams in the competition. And whilst the world focuses on the rugby hype of the World Cup, our own local rugby developments and teams look forward to the second leg of the NRU Sevens tournament this weekend, last weekend's t tournament saw Alofi Makos out on top winning all their games, but this week we'll see tougher competition with additions of three teams to the mix, Hakupu, Vaia and Avaseli, fielding teams. Kickoff will be at 11. And before we finish our news tonight, don't forget to be prepared for the newest census. Enumerators will be coming to your households starting from Friday until Monday next week.